Welcome back. Today we've got a special video for you guys. Uh, it's hiring season in the construction industry. We're a commercial carpentry company, and so I thought that I would take the time to run through what I would like to see either new guys have in their pouches or guys that we're about to hire. So this is kind of a more informal video for what I'd like to see in pouches when we hire guys. So first we'll take a look at the pouches themselves. What I like to see is a utility side, and that's what holds all of your small hand tools, and then a pouch side that holds all of your screws, pins, nails, anything like that. So we'll go ahead and we'll get into the utility pouch. So the utility pouch, uh, what I like to see a lot of times is this setup. And this is kind of more of a drywaller setup. I kind of come from that background when I was in the trades. So the first thing that you're gonna see is your clines. Now, the reason why your clines are important and you wanna get the one with the spring in the middle so it springs back. A lot of times the one without it won't spring back and then you have to pry them back open. But anyways, these are good for pulling your wires taut or twisting a stud when you're working with framing or you're working with ceilings. The next thing that we're gonna go ahead and look at is your snips. These are vital for any ceiling work or cutting studs. These are, these are kind of your go-to for a lot of things. A screwdriver, you just always need it. So this is, this is just a six in one and you can swap heads on it. The next, and if I can get this out, is a keyhole saw. This is for just kind of cutting out drywall or going and cutting a rough side of a, of a piece of drywall. Next is your pencil and a marker. A lot of times, you know, your pencils are for your studs, your markers are more for laying out. So if you get put on a crew where you're just laying out, this is a good, this is a good thing to have so you can mark those corners where you're snapping lines. This is your utility knife. I like to see a more fixed blade. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a better cut for me when I'm cutting drywall. Um, something that I learned from my dad when I was younger. Squeeze clamp. Uh, these, are, these are for your, your grid, your drywall grid, any smaller application where you need to just kind of tighten something. Uh, one of the first things that we put people on is drywall and acoustical ceiling tile. So these come in real handy when you're, when you're stuffing your tile where you're not necessarily lined up and so you're, you can squeeze your, your grid, make it stay, and cut your borders down. So it's one of the, the small utility things that, that you actually need. The next is a six inch clamp. Um, these, these are really good for, for framing or uh, drywall framing, that kind of stuff. So these, these are really utility wise. Uh, a lot of times guys will have 20 of these so you could kind of borrow some of them, but it'd just be a good thing to have if you showed up on your first day of work or your first couple weeks and grabbed a couple of these. They're, they're really nice to have. So we'll go ahead and take a couple of these off. And last but not least is your square. Um, this is this is vital just kind of in layout or if you if you're pulling something we kind of use these just to just to square things up I, I know roof guys or or other trades kind of kind of use these more utilitarian um, but we just use them just to square up ceilings square up to to a corner in your framing something like that it's, it's very very basic with what we would use a square for and so that's the utility of the tools the the last the last portion of this is this bag here. And this one holds all your screws. So we typically use three types of screws. That is a self-tapper mini screw, and that, that just self-taps. We use inch and a quarter drywall screws. You know, so I use it for this bigger pouch here. And then this is just for any of our miscellaneous screws. So these, these are just your zippets that you use to hang stuff on, or you can use your heavier gauge uh, framing screw, which is your 5 16 nut driver. Uh, then, then we have our, our tape measure. And you want to make sure that you get a 25 footer, not one of those 16, 16 footers. Sometimes they just don't pull long enough for what you need, especially in layout. But, uh, but it te definitely you need a 25 footer to run through first. So that'll be, that'll be something good that you have. Um, you'll notice that I, that I left something out as well, and that's a hammer. Um, I, I say that you should have one but you don't necessarily need one. It's, it's one of those things that you need when you don't have it kind of sort of thing. 
I, I definitely, I definitely would say that in my commercial experience of, of 10 years, I probably pulled my hammer out, and this, and this is no joke, probably six to eight times. It's just not something that we use in the trade, uh, or at least I didn't in my framing, sealing, drywall career. Uh, you might knock a hole in a piece of drywall to get it through a pipe or something like that, but that's about it. Guys, keep in mind, we're talking about commercial carpenter here. We're not talking residential, which is completely different. Uh, when we're in the residential sector, I completely understand the high-priced hammers. I understand the cat's paw, the square, the marker, the tape, that kind of stuff. Uh, it, it's a little bit less. And you, you can have the bags on both sides where you can have your six, your 12, your Tico nails, all of these things which don't necessarily fit in one pouch. Uh, and then more so you're using the nailers more than anything. So, so I get that. And so what we're strictly talking about here is the commercial carpentry aspect of this tool belt setup. So that's the kind of stuff that I like to see that guys have uh, on them from day one. A lot of times guys will show up and Quite honestly, sometimes they don't even have pouches or it's half put together. They need this or they borrow this from somebody and then don't return it. And then that guy gets fired and then that guy gets pissed off because he didn't have this or he didn't have that. And now he's got mine and I need to get it back. Inevitably, it always happens. So what we like to see or what we're trying to set up is a video that guys can watch or a video that people can use to say like, hey, if I'm going into a commercial carpentry company or commercial carpentry division, this is what I want to see and this is what I think that you should see when you, you first step onto the job. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Any comments, questions, go ahead and hit us below. We'll be happy to answer them for you.